Now, boys and girls, we're going to start this morning by doing some exercises. So I want to see if you could do this. Can you touch your toes? Let's do some zero exercises. Oh, wow. Good girl. Try it again. This you touch your toes. Wow. Great. Reach up Ready, steady, go. Oh, you're so fast. Right, you turn around and run back. Ready, steady, go. Oh, you're so good. Now, good morning, boys and girls. I want you to imagine that you have been out running about and it's really warm and you come inside and you say, I'm roasted. And you sit down in the settee and you want something nice to drink. What is it you would like to drink that would make you feel less thirsty? Well, maybe you get yourself a nice glass and you take the glass and you set it on the table and you look and you see if you could have something out of the fridge. And the first thing you find is some milk. Now, does milk help you feel less thirsty? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? And it also makes you have lots of nice strong bones and teeth. So that would be a good thing to drink, wouldn't it? What about if you have another little dig in the fridge and you find some nice orange juice? This looks lovely, doesn't it? This is apple and mango, actually. And you could pour some of this nice juice and have a drink, and that would feel really nice. You might actually hear in the background some noise. That's our dog, Molly, having a wee drink. She must be really tired from running around. Uh, what else do we have in the fridge? What about this? A nice bottle of water. Water's really good, isn't it, when you feel thirsty? You have a drink of that, and it makes you feel less thirsty. Or maybe, <clears throat> maybe it's not you've been running about. Maybe it's your mum and dad, and they get a little cup like this, and they get one of these tea bags, put it in, some nice hot water, they make themselves a wee cup of tea along with some milk, and they drink that. Oh, lovely. It takes away your thirst. Well, in our story this morning, we're going to read about somebody uh, who was thirsty. And if you wanted to read it for yourself, you could go to the book of John in the New Testament in the Bible, and you could read all about our story. And in our story, uh, Jesus is going around with his disciples and he goes and travels through a place called Samaria. Now, there's something very unusual about that because Samaria is a place where none of the Jews went and Jesus was a Jew. He was a, from the nation of Israel and no Jews went there because they thought they were much better than the Samaritans and they actually really didn't like the Samaritans. But Jesus said he needed to go through that place because it was God's will. It was his father's will that he should go through there. And he went through there and he went to a certain town. And outside the town, he sat down. And it was the middle of the day and he sat down beside a well. Now, of course, back in those days, if you were thirsty, you didn't go to your fridge and pull out a nice bottle of juice. Where you went to get a nice drink was you went and uh, went to a well, which is a big hole in the ground. And somebody would have had to come along with a bucket or a little glass or something and put it down into the well and, and lift out some water. And as Jesus sat there, there was a lady from the town came along and she was coming out of the town to get some water. And Jesus said to her, oh, can you give me something to drink? Ah, he must have been thirsty. And uh, so the woman went ahead and she started uh, having a look at putting her bucket down the well or whatever she had. Um, and then Jesus said something very unusual to her. He said, if you knew who it was, was asking you for a drink, you would have asked him for a drink and he would have given you, given you living water. And if you had that living water, you would never feel thirsty again. Now, can you imagine that? If you had a bottle of water and you took a drink and you were never, ever thirsty again. We can't imagine that, can we? Every time we go outside and we play in the sun and we get really warm, we come in and we think, I need a drink. And you have to take a wee drink. And so Jesus said this to her and the woman was confused. She said, how would you get something to drink? Because you don't have any bucket to put down the well. And so they began to have a conversation and they chatted back and forth. And then Jesus said to her, I am the Messiah. Now, the Messiah is a special word that gets used in the Bible for, it, it just means someone who was anointed or someone who was given a special job. And right from the beginning of the Bible, people were waiting for God to send someone to do a special job to rescue us people on this earth. 
And so the Jews were waiting for that Messiah. And the Samaritans, well, the Jews didn't like them and the Jews thought they, they were better than the Samaritans. But the Samaritans knew that God was going to do something and send a person. And so Jesus said to her, I'm that person. And, and the woman, she began to think and she said, well, I would really like some of this living water. And so Jesus said, OK, go and get your husband. Well, now that was a bit of a problem for this woman because you know what? <laughs> she didn't have a husband. And she said that to Jesus. Oh, oh, I don't have a husband. And he said, no, you're right. You don't have a husband because you've had five different husbands. And in fact, the man that you have now isn't your husband. He knew all about her before he even met her. Well, do you think she got a bit of a shock? I think she did. But you know what Jesus was helping to, her to understand? When he was helping her to see that he knew all about her, he was helping her to see that he knew why she needed this water, this water that would help her never thirst again. You see, God had given laws about marriage in the Bible, and he said that one man should be married to one woman. And the reason he gave those laws was he knew that it, it would make us happy. Um, because God's laws are given to us not just as rules to try and make us feel uh, all like we're in a straitjacket and we can't do this and we can't do that. God's rules that he gives us are for our good. But of course, because our hearts, we're born with sinful hearts, rebelling against God, and we want to do our own thing. And so, so often we break God's laws and we call that sin. And of course, this woman had broken God's laws. And you know what Jesus was teaching her in this story? When we go our way and when we do our own thing and when we break God's laws, it's, it's like being thirsty because we do all these things that we think make us happy. But really deep down, it's as if I came in really thirsty from running around outside and I went to take a drink and I went like this and there was nothing in the glass. It was empty. I would still feel thirsty. And so Jesus was helping the woman to realize, do you know what? We need something in our lives that takes away our thirst and means that we don't have to keep breaking God's laws in order to try and be happy. And of course, we know that's the reason why Jesus was the Messiah. He was the one who God sent to this earth and he came and died on the cross to take the punishment for all the wrong that we have done so we could be forgiven. You know, we can never perfectly keep God's laws, none of us. You might look at your mums or dads or your teacher in school and think, well, they don't do all the wrong things I do. But you know what? We all, everybody, your Sunday school and upward bound uh, leaders in church, yeah, mums and dads, we all do things that breaks God, break God's law. And because of that, we deserve punishment. But Jesus came, God's son, who was completely perfect, and he came to die so that we could be forgiven. You see, it's interesting. When Jesus came to meet this woman, he didn't come knowing that she'd broken his law to tell her off. He came because he wanted to bring her life. He wanted her to trust in him so she could be forgiven, so she could know what it was to have a real drink and never feel thirsty again. And that's why we have these little lessons on a Sunday or whenever you do it during the week, is so that we can help you learn about Jesus. Because, boys and girls, you need to come to know Jesus as your saviour. It's not just enough that we do our little lessons every week or that we read the Bible. Each of us must come and realise that we're sinners and that nothing that we can do can make us right before God. We must be sorry for the wrong that we've done and we must trust in what Jesus has done on the cross and ask for forgiveness. And that's what it's like to get a drink that means we will never feel thirsty again. And then when we trust in Jesus, when we ask him to forgive us, it's like picking up the glass, but instead of finding there's nothing in it, we find, oh, it's got lovely fresh water. And that's what it feels like to be forgiven, to have our sins taken away. Now, that's the story of the Samaritan woman. Boys and girls, I hope you will take your little worksheets that you have at home and you'll fill those in. Um, and if you'd like to send in a little picture to us when you've that complete, we'll try and include them next week or the week after in the video. Or maybe you even want your mums or dads to take a little picture of you completing them. Well, you get them to do that and you send that in to us. And remember as well, on your worksheet, there's a little memory verse. 
Um, and that little memory verse is from the book of Isaiah. And you can go through and try and learn that. And that will help you learn some of God's words, which are so important to us. Um, good to see you again and look out for our lesson again next week.